Hey everyone, how you doing today? It is Thursday and topic number two with Jonathan Twomley is going to be about a stock. Yes, Jonathan and I usually talk real estate, sometimes single family, sometimes multifamily, but you know what? We're going to talk about GameStop, maybe AMC, maybe Bed Bath & Beyond, but likely more the mania around them. So how you doing today, Jonathan? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. So I just, first question I want to ask before we get into the mania of the current, I want to rewind the clock and get your experience from the 1999 bubble. We're like, were you in it or were you just busy working and didn't really experience it? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was not, I, I think if I remember back, I had, you know, a small amount of money in a 401k at that point, because I had just started my, my legal career. And I, if you can believe this, that when I started working, they wouldn't even let you participate in the 401k for the first year. I remember, it was like, yeah. Yeah, remember that? Like, yeah. so I, so I think by 19, I started working in beginning of 98. So I started investing in 99 into the 401k and had some money in it, yeah. but it, it was not, you know, it was not, a, not, a, I wasn't like freaking out. Like a lot of people, like, you know, the partners in my law firm yeah. in the crash, were all ah. you know, freaking out. But uh, um, I mean, we actually had a partner who knew Jerry Yang oh, in yeah. college and had given him $10,000 for, to start Yahoo. And, uh, and he retired because his Yahoo stock was so valuable. <laughs> and then, and then he came back. <laughs> <laughs> because his Yahoo stock went like tanked yeah. you know, in the crash. That's funny. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of like my memory of 1999. Yeah. So let me just catch everyone up. So I was in the Valley. I've been in the Valley 50 years. I saw the 99 crash up close and personal. Oh, by the way, I was in software, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about like the epicenter of what was going on. I remember parties where people were, were, were just doing silly things. I remember companies being valued that had no revenue. Uh, I remember Webvan being the thing, right? Webvan way back when, just going ask parabolic. Everybody was like, which search engine is going to win? I remember Ask Jeeves and Excite and all these other ones going on. It was a crazy time. I mean, in the Valley, I have never felt that kind of energy. I mean, mm. everybody was excited. Everybody was moving and shaking and all of that. And oh, by the way, that's the time of my life where I turned seven grand into 200 because I jumped in, right? 200 grand. In the stock market. In the stock market, yeah. yeah. Before my real estate investing. Uh, and it was, I thought I was an investor, but I was just a speculator, you know, no. play, playing in the market. So I, I bring a lot of experience in pain to this conversation because my 200 turned into 40 very quickly. It took me, it took me like 18 months to go from seven to 200. And it took me like weeks to go from 200 to 40. Yeah. Actually, I'll just give you one more memory of, of mm -hmm. that time. I just, I remember that, um, that was when law firms went from suit and tie to business casual. Yeah. And the reason was because so many people were leaving and going to tech startups ah. and they were, they were desperate to do anything to try to stem the tide. And, <laughs> yeah. and um, it, we got, we got raises like that sort of 1999 <clears throat> into 2000 period before the crash, we got like three or four raises during yeah. the course of the year because they were trying to like staunch the flow right. of people going to, t to tech firms. And I mean, it was, it was nuts. And then they went to business casual yeah. and they, you know, they did everything except what they really needed to do was like hire more people to like relieve some of the strain. Cause we yeah. were also dealing with um, Y2K, right? So, oh, being, I remember, so yeah. I was like on the Y2K task force at my firm and like everybody was like freak. And there was all this, so much work yeah. around like, y2k i remember compliance and then it was like a big nothing <laughs> when it happened you know uh it's funny i remember my uncle my uncle was a computer guy from what like like from back in the 50s and i remember yeah. him talking to me like in the 80s about y2k like what was going to happen like yeah you know none of the computers could are going to be able to handle they didn't recognize like, zero zero yeah. yeah they wouldn't recognize zero zero and all the world was going to go you know to hell <laughs> and <laughs> then didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, the reason I wanted to talk, I wanted to just give everybody a, a qualifier of our experience because all our conversations are our experience. I want to relate it to what's been going on. And we'll just pick on GameStop. You can pick on any stock you want to, but GameStop's the one that everybody's talking about. It has gone parabolic. Uh, it has, 
frankly, retail investors kicked Wall Street in the nuts because Wall Street, frankly, did some unwise things and the retail investor caught them. And because of forums and in, in technology and apps, the retail investors organized and took on Wall Street in one. I think for a lot of things, you know, the first step of this, the first step of this conversation is, I think, net positive. Uh, there will be a downside we'll talk about in a minute. But I think the first step of this is, you know what, the retail investors organized, they found a stock that was being mistreated by Wall Street, which I would think 140% short of a float is a bad idea. So I, you know, I want to give I want to give the retail investors uh, in Reddit props for finding it and, and pushing chips to the middle of the table. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have a little bit of a different view. I think a okay. lot of this um, has been sort of the same pile on that you see in Bitcoin. It looks very similar to me. Oh no, that's where we're going to go next. But I yeah. just want to say, you know, like the first move. Yeah. It was retail investors organizing because it started slowly. I mean, if you go back right. and look at like the first three or four or seven days, it was it was actually legit right. analysis going, but, that's a problem. Right. But what I what I mean though is that then you've got all these people just sort of piling into this yes. because they not because they had any view of it, but because they're just like they see other people making money and they see this thing going up and then there's all this chatter in these chat rooms. Yes. And so everybody starts piling in yes. because they want to take advantage of the upswing. Yeah. And you know, and then that sort of, you know, I was reading an analysis about this the other day about sort of the dynamic of what happens is once enough people piled in and started pushing the price up, you know, then the margin calls on the short sellers became bigger and bigger and bigger. So they started having to sell to cover. Yes. Even though, even though their position may well have been the correct position to take, because you look at like, you know, GameStop is a, was this company or is this company that's a retail based company, yep. like retail is dying brick and mortar plus COVID yep. all their competitors are online and they were not going online now. So they got some activists in who are now saying, you know, we can go online, but it's still kind of speculative as to whether that's going to happen. Sure. So the, sh the, so the short bet made a lot of sense. And as with some of these other retailers too, but you've got, but as, as the price was pushed up, the, the short sellers were forced, forced yeah. to buy to cover and the buying to cover raises the price of the stock more. Yeah, right. So it just perpetuates this parabolic run up. And then, that, and then that draws in more people. You have this network effect and oh, like yeah. the kind of, it's a feedback loop where more and more people jump in. So I, I think, you know, maybe there might've been some of the early actors who were like, Hey, we're going to take the contrary bet because we don't believe that the short position, we think the short, the short position is over it was overdone. Yeah. Yeah. It's overdone. Uh, and then, you know, we think there's money to be made here, but mm -hmm. that doesn't justify no, the, the subsequent. Oh, I'm not saying it does. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I just want to give, I, I, you know, I want to peel this apart because again, I think, I think at least in the beginning, you know, again, I think the early days, maybe the first week of this run up was fundamentally retail investors organizing. Cause that's been the hardest thing for retail investors, right? You, I, we can do our analysis, make our bet, but it's so small, but because we have these forums now, because we have apps, you can sort of, you can get a collective and you can go one direction, but there is downside. Because the collective, like you say, has a feedback loop, yeah. forces behavior. And the other thing that you didn't mention that I think is going on right now is there was a there was several hedge funds that were short, and they started getting their teeth kicked in. Their first result is we're going to go harder, right? We're going to short more, right? We're going to we're going to kill the retail investor by increasing our short or whatever they would do. Right. That didn't work. So what's going to happen is one of these hedge funds is going to peel off. They're going to walk around the table. They're going to go to the retail side and they're going to go, okay, now we're buying. We're going to run this up extra high because that's going to bring the feedback loop of fear missing out. It's going to cause my other hedge fund buddies to lose and probably go out of business. We're going to run it two, three, four hundred percent higher than it normally would. And then we're going to walk around the table and we're going to we're going to eat twice. I think that is all happening right now. Well, <laughs> I mean, it could happen. You know, so. The thing that's that's also happening with this now is now the SEC is looking into this though, right? Because there's a oh sure, there's of course. Like a, this this is this is a kind of stock market manipulation, and you know I think that th we've never seen this before because they haven't had the tech to enable it to happen. Right? Exactly. There has been, you know, the classic pump and dump. And look, we might when this is all said and done, might see some of that too. Sure. Where 
this was this was the the ability to use technology and social media to create a frenzy around this so that the people who got in early could pump yeah. and dump uh it, you know it used to happen it, it, just by forcing the price up and, yep. and and chattering a bit but that but you couldn't do it as easily and quickly as you can now yeah right so to create that positive feedback loop yeah. so uh so i don't know i mean i i you know i i've heard that this is some kind of populist reaction against hedge funds maybe it is maybe it's not i don't know yeah uh, i think know, that's like, all spin at this point it, i think it did start from a good place i think uh it started to get noticed and then i think fear of missing out uh running up and i really do think there's a hedge fund that suddenly switched sides i think that's what happened it's sw they switch slides they have bigger pile they're they're, go they're gonna push it up but again the other thing i will say is this is no longer about gamestop yeah the stock is not gamestop and gamestop's not the stock there's no reason to be $500 a share or $300 a share, have a, have a market cap bigger than X or Y or Z. It's, it's not about the business. This will eventually implode. This is, this is why I track the consumer because they're predictable, right? This is now in that parabolic move where people are going to be jumping in. And then at some point the rug, you know, it takes stairs up and elevator down. This will be the, you know, this is just the latest tulip bulb to go back to what happened in the Netherlands. It has no intrinsic value. It's, Warren Buffett says that well, stocks are a weighing machine ultimately, but sometimes they're a voting machine. And today, GameStop's a voting machine. Well, so let's let's contrast this with Bitcoin. Sure. Because, because the way that I view this, GameStop has a lot more intrinsic value than Bitcoin does, right? It is the reason that the, the market move is the same. The market idea is this is going to go up and somebody else will pay me for this, mm. right? So I'm going to be able to sell my... Bitcoin or my share of stock uh, to somebody else if I if I want to, and I'm betting that the price is going to still be high, as opposed to being zero. And yeah. you'll and and you see the same kind of justifications like, oh, well, the big banks are getting into Bitcoin now. Well, of course they're getting into it. They're not. They're not. They're, this is not like them saying, oh, Bitcoin is a like a thing this is them saying we see an opportunity to make some money off this thing yeah and we're gonna and we're not gonna and we're gonna invest you know some infinitesimally small percentage yeah. of our investable assets into this thing which is enough to move the price of it a lot yeah and and then we're, and the minute that we see trouble we're gonna sell out our positions and take a profit that doesn't mean you know oh we believe that bitcoin is like you know an asset or a a store value or anything. Yeah. So, but GameStop, as opposed to Bitcoin, actually has brick and mortar. It has assets. It has brick and mortar stores. It has all these this inventory of games. It has an enormous customer list. Right. It has leases yeah. that are that have value. So there is actually value. There is a liquidation value. Sure. To, to GameStop, whereas the liquidation value of Bitcoin is zero. Right. Yeah. And as soon as the market I mean, look, it may never happen or may never happen in our lifetimes, but as soon as sufficient numbers of people think, oh, Bitcoin isn't worth anything, it mm -hmm. will cease to be worth anything, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what happens with like a stock like like uh, GameStop. And, and I, I think you know, there's some at least anecdotal evidence that the rise up in Bitcoin and in GameStop and the stock market in general or it has, is a result of people being bored, mm -hmm. sitting at home, playing making bets on the stock market i mean that group that caused the, the reddit group that caused this run-up in gamestop is called wall street bets right yeah. it, it is basically saying we're making bets there's no like fundamental yeah, analysis it's not here. investing it's bets. No, it's, not, it's like we're making a bet on, that this is going to go up yeah and and so i i think that it'll be interesting to see what happens when people are back at work whether yeah. they're still well i think there's and when they're not getting you yeah, know, the stimulus checks where yeah. people are betting money with stimulus checks, and, you know, and so I, I, I think that I think that the Bitcoin phenomenon and the GameStop phenomenon are are related, and they may also be related psychologically in the sense that there is the, a large element behind Bitcoin is like, you know, it's it's uh, like st stick it to the to the man, stick it to the man, right? yeah, right. Right. I mean, the, the Bitcoin thing is like, we don't believe in, you know, 
government. We don't believe in fiat currency. We don't believe in, you know, so this is, we're going to go invest in something else that has nothing to do with that. And I think the GameStop is sort of similar in the sense it's like, hey, we're going to go and eat these big guys lunch. Yeah. Right. Because like we're tired, we hate, you know, big business, we hate big government, we hate big everything. Yeah. And um, so the, I, I think it's, they're, they're similar. You know, they're, they, I think there's there's some kind of tie between the two. Yeah. So we'll see where this this winds up. A couple of, couple of three things I want to mention before we wrap yeah. up this section. First and foremost, I totally get where you're coming from. I think the GameStop actually is, has a little bit of extra gasoline because what people are doing is they're selling calls to generate money to buy stock. And it's, they're adding this leverage that just gets more and more positive as the stock climbs, right? And uh, it feels good while it happens. I was there. I, I, I yeah. know. But it will end. GameStop will not be a million dollar stock. It won't be $800 stock. I mean, it just, it eventually, it won't be an $800 stock in two years, right? I don't right. know how long this is going to last. It will get back to a weighing machine eventually. Uh, and I'll tell people, if you, if you are in it today, right, you still have an open position, do me a favor. Take your original capital back. Don't be in worse shape. Get your original capital back. If you want to let it run after that, who cares? But don't right. be an idiot like I was. Take at least your original capital back. And if you want to be conservative, sell half. Sell half. You yeah. don't actually make any money by pointing at your, your stock trading account looking, hey, I've got 20 grand or 200 grand or $2 million. You make it when you sell. Exactly. So be It's careful. the same as any other asset. The same as Bitcoin, the same as real estate, the same as anything. It's all paper profits until you actually sell it and put the cash in the bank. Yes. Right. So, um, so the fact that right now there's a frenzy around an asset, you know, doesn't mean there's any. You may have temporary net worth growth. Yeah. But it, but until you stick the cash in the bank, or put it into something that is you know historically a lot like put it in gold or something where there's this yeah. very very long historic store of value. Uh, you know, you, you've got, yeah. you don't have anything. So, um, you know, and especially with real estate where it's leveraged, you can go negative, right? I mean, you can Absolutely. go, you can go negative on your investment. And we're going to talk about that next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so just, you know, Be proceed careful. with caution is, is I think the message both of us are very cool. Know, enjoy it while it lasts. Enjoy and, it while it and lasts. Make, I like and that. take your profits before it ends. There you go. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs>